Okay, what is the system of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? Well, it can be described in a few different ways. I'm going to give you one rendition, which is pretty simple and will resonate with most of your listeners. Jiu-Jitsu is a system based around four distinct steps. You can add steps, you can subtract steps, but the, the rendition I'm going to give you now is probably, probably the most widely known. Okay, let's say a friend of yours asks for advice on fighting. He knows you're a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu expert. You're a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And he's saying to me, Joe Rogan, tell me, I don't know anything. I, I want to fight someone else using your Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. What are the steps of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? What's the system that it, uh, what is the system that it espouses? You're going to see always that step number one is take your opponent to the ground. Okay? Why? Why do, you, why do you think the ground is so special? Why did Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu choose the ground as step number one of its system? Why do you think? Well, it all came out of Judo, right? So Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu took the effective submission techniques of Judo and then just refined them. That's the historical <coughs> reason, right. but what's the, what's the mechanical or physical reason? Because you can control someone on the ground far better, right? Yeah, you can control people. Lomachenko con uh, controls people in the standing position with angle and distance. There's different ways to control people. Yes, in boxing, if you only are boxing. But why the ground? Why did they choose the ground? What's the mechanical reason? What happens when you take a human being to the ground? Well, there's a whole barrier behind them that you can press them against. What about if you're in bottom position? Well, you could use that barrier as leverage. True. But there's something that occurs when someone goes down to the ground. There's something big that you may be missing here. What am I missing? What's the most explosive event in the Olympic Games? The, the, the event that probably requires more transfer of energy and development of kinetic energy than any other. There's a bunch you could name, but one of them for me is always going to be the, the javelin throw. The javelin throw involves a full-powered sprint, a jump, a massive explosive turning of both hips and shoulders, and a throw. All the quintessential explosive elements of the human body are involved in the javelin throw, probably to a greater degree than any other Olympic event. And as a result, people can throw a javelin 80, 90 meters. What would happen if you took those same javelin throwers and made them perform the same event on their knees? Wouldn't they, be so good. They probably couldn't throw it more than 10 meters. Okay, and what's changed? The closer they get to the ground, the less they can employ explosive force. What's the first thing cowboys do when they go to brand a steer? Take it down. Yeah. They lock up its legs and they put it down on the ground. Nobody tries to brand a standing steer. You're going to get killed because it can employ explosive dynamic movement to hurt you. You put them on the ground, dynamic explosive movement is massively curtailed. It takes away the single riskiest element of fighting, which is quick, dynamic movement that can generate kinetic energy. Mm. So step number one of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is get it to the ground. It's inherently safer. Less things can go catastrophically wrong on the ground than in the standing position. What's step number two? Secure dominant position. Control. Control, too vague. There's many ways to control people. There's a definite step. You've just taken the guy down. What's your first thing in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? Well, the first thing I would try to do is get to a dominant position. What do you mean by that? Be more but, precise. Okay, pass to side control. Good, try good, to good, mount. good, good. You just answered it right there. Get past his legs. Pass his legs. Why? His legs are strong. They carry you around. You could, you could hold a person in position. They, they're very good defensively. They're dangerous. They're dangerous. Okay, if I end up inside your legs, if you're a skilled jiu-jitsu player, you can arm lock me, you can leg lock me, you can strangle me. Even if you were an untrained fighter, you could up kick me. Right. Many a man has been knocked out by an up kick. Sure. Even an untutored guy can form an up kick. Sure. Legs are dangerous. So step number two is get past those dangerous legs. What's step number three? Go for submission. No? He must be a 10th planet black belt. <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw that in somewhere, Joe. I'm an asshole. Um, step number three, Joe, you're failing. On pass, the okay, uh, pass the legs, 
Well, I'm, I'm going to try to control. I'm going to try to either mount or, like I said, side control. Well, I'm trying you're to, you're try on the right track. I'm you, trying to you're going to work your way through a hierarchy of positions. Yes. You're going to go knee on belly. You're going to go side control. You're going to transition to mount. You're going to transition to rear mount. Depending upon my game. Yeah. There's a sequence of, of pins once you get past your opponent's legs, and Jiu-Jitsu encourages you to go through those various pins. If you look at the sport of Jiu-Jitsu, the pins score different amounts of points. Neon belly scores a certain amount. Mount position scores more. Rear mount scores more. Why? Ever wondered about that? Why do we score the pins of jiu-jitsu differently? Well, there's more available from rear mount, of course. You have, uh, you can, of course, you can attack the neck. You can also attack the arms. You, you have mm -hmm. uh, a positional advantage where you can't be attacked. You're, you're behind them. So it's one of the most superior positions to achieve. Mm -hmm. Very good. What about the mount? Uh, mount, when the striking involved, is phenomenal. Um, when you just put your finger on it right there, Joe. Every one of the pins of jiu-jitsu, the value of it is measured by your potential to strike your opponent on the ground. That's why they score more. Neon Belly scores more than side control. Because from distance of neon belly, you can strike with more power. It's inherently unstable, however. So it scores less than mount, which is inherently more stable and offers the same punching platform. Step number three of jiu-jitsu is to work your way through a hierarchy of pins where the pins are graded in value according to your ability to strike with effect on the ground. So far, so far we've got three elements in this system of jiu-jitsu. Step number one, get the fight down to the ground where explosive kinetic energy is less likely to be developed by a dangerous opponent. Step number two, get past his dangerous legs. Step number three, work your way through this hierarchy of pins where the pins are understood in terms of the, the potential to harm your opponent with strikes on the floor. What's step number four? Step number four is try to secure a position where you can submit them. You've already got the position. So what's step number four? Attack with a submission. Correct. So we've just described Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu as a four-step system. It's beautiful, it's elegant, and it's deadly effective. Step number one, take the fight to the ground. Take away the danger of explosive kinetic energy. Step number two, get past his dangerous legs. Step number three, work your way through a hierarchy of pins. Each one graded upon your ability to harm your opponent with strikes on the ground and set up step number four, submissions. And now the question that needs to be asked, where do leg locks fit 